Hello, this is Dave Lee Travis, and welcome to another edition of the Top 10 Auto Show, where this week we run down the chart of the very best small cars. This is a huge and very competitive car sector, so to weed out the wheat from the chaff, we've put together the authoritative Men and Motors panel, which includes editors from some of the UK's top motoring magazines. They voted each car in the categories of image and style, practicality, performance, handling and ride, and of course, value for money. After a lot of calculation, we've worked out the top ten. You'll see them tonight. Maybe no surprises that the Chrysler Neon isn't higher than at the bottom rung of our chart of the top ten small cars. When this all-American car first graced our shores in the spring of 1996, it wasn't exactly being raved about in the colour supplements. Chrysler really thought that Europe would take to the neon as a delicious piece of American pie, but in the end it created as much excitement as yesterday's leftover pizza. The bland styling didn't help. It didn't exactly make a statement like, say, Chrysler's excellent PT Cruiser MPV, and the neon had a pretty cramped cabin inside. The two-litre engine just never seemed powerful enough and became really rough when revved hard. In its favour, you do get a lot of features thrown in as standard. The problem is that these features maybe you wouldn't need, but you still have to pay for them. But the main reason why many people test drive and then decide on another is that the Chrysler Neon is just not that competitive. There are better cars in this sector, far better. So let's take a look at the specifications. Overall, the Chrysler Neon isn't a bad car, but there are far better value cars out there. Let's look at our panel's average percentage scores for each of the judged categories. So, the Chrysler Neon ends up with 53%, number 10 in our charts. At number 9 in this year's top 10 of small cars, we present the Nissan Almera. Once the ugly girl at the party, the Nissan has been recently restyled, so it's far more attractive, but still not the belle of the ball. Nissan recently came up with a statement that they were always going to design exciting cars in the future, but the Almera obviously came out before this policy. If you're after a car that's as reliable as your best mate, the Almera fits the bill. Compared with the previous model, the new Almera is longer, wider and taller. Handling has been improved, and this has a lot to do with the body structure, now being almost 30% stiffer than before. The controls are all immediate and positive, and if you can put up with the rather choppy ride, it's not a bad car to drive at all. But what did our panel think about the Nissan Almera? They gave percentage points for each of our categories and we've averaged them out to get our final score. So, 58% overall for the Almera, bringing it in at number 9 in our top 10. At number 8, it's the VW Beetle. Surely this would score high in the image and style section, so why is it in the lower half of the chart? Well, let's look at the other categories of judging. Practicality is severely compromised by having to be constricted by the famous Beetle shape. The boot is tiny as well, and the huge dash is enormous, wasting a lot of cabin space and giving a restricted view. The driving experience is a pretty average experience, although the V5 is hot and willing. Remember, this is really a Golf with an incredible body kit tacked on. 
The Golf's excellent driving manners are passed on to its stylish baby brother, but this certainly isn't a driver's car. But where the Beetle scores is in the desirability stakes. Admittedly, the new Mini has stolen many hearts from previous lovers of the Beetle, but this VW still turns heads wherever it goes. Let's look up the figures. So let's see where the marks went from our panel of experts for the VW Beetle over all the categories. And with 59% overall, this puts the Beetle at number 8 in our top 10 chart. At number 7, it's a different car but with the same underlying personality. The Audi A3 is also based on the Golf, but it's much more than a product of badge engineering. The VW may be well screwed together, but the A3 is constructed with almost obsessive solidity by their Audi counterparts. Behind the wheel, it gives the sense of driving a miniature executive car. It's quality switch gear and refined motoring. What of course you don't get is the space, and while the front two have a decent space, the rear cabin is a very cramped affair. You may wonder why the A3 is far pricier than the Golf it's based on, but if you're going to commit to long-term ownership, you'll make much of the money back with the Audi's higher residuals, and you'll have the pleasure of driving around in a classier motor. There's something about Audis which tugs at the heartstrings. Those exceedingly well-built but generally expensive hunks of German metal struggle in terms of sales and cannot muster the marked loyalty of BMW or Mercedes-Benz. Now the A3 has gained the added appeal of five doors, but the growth spurt fails to measure up in terms of performance. Audi lords the sporting nature of its compact and practical A3, but in automatic form in particular, it feels anything but exciting. So let's take a look at the technical specifications. So the Audi A3 has been analysed by our expert panel. What marks did they give the car in each of the categories? The Audi A3 totting up 67%, putting it in 7th position in our chart. At number 6, it's a new entry into our chart for Fiat's replacement for the Brava Bravo machine, the Stilo. You know how it often happens in life that a girl you meet doesn't make much of an impression? She may even annoy you, but you end up falling in love with her. Well, the Fiat Stilo is just like that. One look at that back end and those huge, cheap-looking light clusters put you off even sitting in the thing. Then, behind the wheel, you're faced with a very cheap-looking and feeling plastic switches and fascia. But all cars are compromises. Where you lose in one department, you gain in another. And on the move, you'll discover a Fiat which has good road manners and is, dare I say this for a Fiat, actually refined. The gear change is a joy to use, and particularly with the sportier three-door versions, holds corners like it's on rails. The puny 1.2 engine can be ignored. And if you opt for a 1.8 Stilo, you'll be rewarded with a healthy acceleration and decent fuel economy as well. You'll be getting a smile on your face at last and you'll be falling in love with a car. You'll be forgiving it any initial poor impressions and just like the plain girl you weren't that impressed with at first, you'll be falling for the beauty within. So, let's look at the Stilo's specs.
So, here's how our panel voted the car over its five categories. The Fiat Stilo gaining a healthy 68% from our expert panel, putting it straight into our chart at number six. At number five, it's the VW Golf. We've already covered the Golf-based Beetle and A3, but this is the real McCoy. The Fiesta is the UK's best-selling car, but spread the net across Europe and you'll discover the Golf as number one. It's both a popular car for the masses and a chic must-have for those who consider that kind of thing important. This is the fourth Golf to come from Volkswagen and it comes with a feeling of quality that's the envy of others. The interior is very stylish and ergonomic if you can put up with so much blackness. At night, the controls light up like a spacecraft, though. The Golf's the kind of car that appeals to so many different types of people. When you see one coming towards you, you've no idea who'll be behind the wheel. It could be a little old lady, a funky dude, or a young mum with a few kids. This appeal, plus the solid construction, means that your Golf will keep its value better than many others in its class. If there's one problem with the Golf, it's not as exciting to drive as earlier versions. Even with the GTI power plant under the bonnet, the heavy Mark IV chassis makes a solid, safe environment, but increases the inertia. So, while we're in scientific mode, let's look at the figures. So here's how our panel voted the car over its five categories. So let's average out those scores to reveal that the Golf gets a total of 69%, making it this year's number five. So that's it for part one of our top 10 small cars of 2002. Do join us after the break when we reveal our top four. Welcome back to the all-new Top 10 Auto Show, where this week we're looking at the Top 10 Small Cars of 2002. It's a new entry at number 4 for the new Peugeot 307. Some say that the 307 isn't as fun to drive as the 306, but this is just what the old 205 fan said when the heavier 206 took over the baton. It's the price you pay for extra safety and refinement. Even though there are five trim levels, even at the entry level, you get a decent amount of kit. A far cry from the days when the base model meant just that, basic and crude. Plus, if you've ever been put off buying a Peugeot thinking that it's a little cheap and flimsy, a sit behind the wheel makes you pleasantly surprised at the chunky switchgear, the textured plastics and large clear instruments. Overall, the Peugeot 307 with its slightly raised driving position is a great car for people who don't want to go the whole hog with a high-up mini MPV and offers a great value package that's wowing them across Europe. Let's look at our panel's average percentage scores for each of the judged categories. Taking all the judges' scores into consideration and averaging it out, it takes 70% of the final score, giving the position in our chart of number four. At number three, it's yet another car based on the VW Golf, so that's four in this week's chart. It's the Seat Leon. However, 
If you didn't know, there aren't any obvious clues to its heritage. All you'd know as you climb behind the wheel on the supportive sporty seats and push the pedal down is that this gives a far sportier drive than any of the other Golf variants, and that's exactly what the designers at Seat are aiming at. Our judges weren't that impressed by the practicality side of the Leon, particularly with the high loading sill, but were scoring it highly in other categories such as handling, ride and particularly value. The Leon is actually cheaper than the Golf, yet offers much more equipment plus a full three-year warranty. So what, you may say, as the value of Seats after some years will be less than that of VW. But if you look through the small ads, you'll see that many of the Seat range are really holding their value well. So, let's look at the figures. So let's see where the marks went from our panel of experts over all the categories. The Seat Leon gets an average of 72%, putting it in the number three slot in our top ten. Well, we're almost at the number one car in our top ten small cars, but here's the car that was pipped at the post. The Alfa Romeo 147, which has moved up five places from last year's survey to this year's number two. Now, if you started out looking for a stylish, sporty hatch, the 147 would definitely be on your initial wish list, but then maybe the pencil would hover nervously. Should you cross it out because of Alfa's poor reliability problems? Well, you shouldn't have to worry these days, and the old problems of rust and breakdowns are well in the past. The build quality has gone up a quantum leap over even the 156, and now you'll get a gorgeous clunking door sound and lovely rubberized plastics in the cabin. The comfort in the driver's seat is first class, and once you've used the fiddly controls and pretty poor ergonomics, you've got a hell of an exciting drive ahead of you. Now you have to admit that the Alfa Romeo 147 is not only gobsmackingly pretty, it's also based on a shortened version of the 156's floor pan, and this helps the car enjoy sharp steering and great handling. So, let's look at the figures for our number two car. Let's look at our panel's average percentage scores for each of the judged categories. The Men and Motors Expert panel gave the Alpha a score of 73%, number two on our chart. So, before we reveal our number one car in this week's category, let's run down the top ten small cars of the year. At number 10, the Chrysler Neon, the little all-American runaround. In at number 9, Nissan's improved Almero with great driving dynamics. Number 8, the cute little VW Beetle. At number 7, it's Audi's little A3 with the high residual. Straight in at number 6, Fiat's all-new Stilo. Down a few places but still riding high, the VW Golf at number 5. Peugeot's stylish 307 is at number 4. It's the Seat Leon at number three. While at two, it's Alpha Drop Dead Gorgeous 147. Here's a car which just last year was very much the runt of BMW's litter. A cut down three series with poor driving dynamics. It seemed to be bought by people who desperately wanted a BMW badge, but actually would have been better served by a Golf or A3. The old compact was well due for replacement, and what a replacement. This now a hugely desirable motor with superb driving dynamics, plus the balance of this rear wheel drive machine along with the electronic traction aids will keep a smile on your face on demanding roads. 
The new compact is a little bit more expensive than the outgoing model, but it's worth every penny. The option list is long and comprehensive, as they know that the target audience for the BMW Compact love to customise to the limit. If we had to complain, we'd say that there isn't much headroom in the back. But this is a compact, for goodness sake. And a little tight cabin space for occasional passengers is a small price to pay for that gorgeous sweeping roofline. So, well done to BMW on really coming up trumps with the new compact. Let's drink in those stats. So the BMW Compact has been analysed by our expert panel. What marks did they give the car in each of the categories? So, with 74% of the average vote over the five voting categories, the Beamer gets a top slot in our chart this week. This is Gary Schufer from Granada Men and Motors. I'm here with Phil Horton, who is the marketing director of BMW. And we are here today to present him with an award because the BMW Compact has won top small car. Phil, this is for you. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Gary. I, I, I have to say I'm delighted. I mean, this must be the toughest category of all uh, on small cars. There are just so many great small cars, and it, it means a lot to us to actually win for the Compact because it's a relatively new car, but we're delighted. Congratulations. Thanks well done. Very much. So congratulations to BMW, and do please join us next week for the top 10 small family cars. Join us then.